Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming out. Uh, I'm surprised any of you are here since everyone's eating right now. So I see a couple of you eating in the audience. I'll allow it. Um, I'm here to talk to you today about what's coming out of the DreamHost Labs and kind of an update on, on DreamHost products and services. Uh, by way of introduction, my name is Jonathan LaCour. I'm the Vice President of Cloud at DreamHost. Uh, and I've been there about three years now working with OpenStack and Ceph and uh, various other open source projects to create some great services. So if you haven't heard of DreamHost before, we're about 16 years old, uh, which in internet time is quite an old business. Um, we were founded as a web hosting company. Um, we have over 400,000 customers, um, very broad mixed base of entrepreneurs and developers. Uh, we also have entered the cloud space and um, we have a huge open source focus. We host over uh, 750,000 WordPress sites, 1.5 million domain names. Uh, lots of internet traffic comes through DreamHost. Uh, and we're huge contributors to Ceph, Solometer, uh, Neutron, Oslo, a bunch of other projects as well. Uh, and we actually were the creators of and incubators of Ceph for, for many years. One of our co-founders, Sage Weil, created Ceph, which is the uh, storage solution that many of you guys know about. Um, we're also a founding member of the OpenStack Foundation. And we've been involved in the OpenStack project since right near the beginning of the project. Um, Simon Anderson, our CEO, is on the board of directors. And we're heavily involved in the community. Uh, so what I'd actually like to do is give you a quick context for, for the project I want to talk to you about today by talking a bit about two other projects. So first is Dream Objects. Dream Objects is our, our cloud storage product. It's S3 and Swift compatible, and it's built on top of Ceph. Um, as I mentioned, one of our co-founders created Ceph as an open source project. We incubated it for many years, developed it, helped it become uh, production ready, and took it to market. Uh, it's completely compatible with S3 and Swift. Um, and we even have a uh, content delivery network from Fastly integrated uh, that we call DreamSpeed CDN. It's taken off pretty well. Lots of uh, applications out there for users and users who don't want to use necessarily the APIs. Um, and many of you may know that a couple years back, we created a company called Ink Tank, uh, which we spun out of DreamHost to incubate and continue to develop and provide services on top of Ceph, the open source project. Uh, and that went spectacularly well for everyone involved. And now uh, Red Hat has taken ownership of Ink Tank and has done a wonderful job continuing to steward that project. Um, and that brings me to Dream Compute, which is our OpenStack-based public cloud. Uh, it also is built on Ceph for block storage. Um, we use KVM for our hypervisor and uh, the latest and greatest versions of OpenStack, or not quite the latest and greatest, but we're getting there. Um, we use Cinder and Ceph for block storage. Uh, and we get lightning fast boot from volume support as a result. So you can create a virtual machine and have it spun up and available to SSH uh, in 45 to 60 seconds, uh, which is pretty, pretty quick. Um, that's thanks to the copy on write technology in Ceph itself. But we also have um, some really interesting networking technology. And that's really what I want to focus on today and talk to you a little bit about our, our virtual networking. Um, when we created Dream Compute, we really wanted uh, L2 isolation for every tenant. But we also wanted IPv6 support. And we wanted sophisticated routing. And we wanted all the features um, that people are going to want uh, going forward. So we created a project called Aconda. Uh, on top of uh, Linux and IP tables and some other technology and integrated it with OpenStack and integrate with VMware NSX, which is what we use for our L2, isol uh, L2 network virtualization. Uh, and, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. DreamCube's architecture is also open. Um, we are more than happy to share with anyone who's interested what our hypervisors are like, what the storage nodes are like. Uh, we use 10 gig networking everywhere with uh, white box switches powered by Cumulus Linux, which is one of our partners. Cumulus, is, Cumulus Networks is here. Um, you should go talk to them about that. It's a, it's a wonderful solution. And if you were interested in trying out Dream Compute, you can try it out today. Just go to our website and sign up. Uh, note that if you are using an American credit card and signing up from, uh, from Paris, you may be put in a pending queue because it might look like fraud to us. Uh, but just let us know and we'll let you in. Um, we have plans starting at $19 a month, 30-day free trial, as I mentioned. But let's talk about Aconda. Um, this is something we're very excited. Just like we did with Ink Tank and spun out to support Ceph, we're spinning out a new business called Aconda. Um, we're announcing that today. Uh, you may have seen the press release. Um, 
we are uh, at our booth, E30. We have the CEO of this new venture, and, and I'll be there as well. I'm an advisor for the business. Um, but really, it's all about the open source, uh, open source networking and open source network virtualization. Um, and it's production ready, uh, open source network virtualization for cloud service providers. So this is the technology that we are using in Dream Compute today to power all the L3 Plus network services inside of Dream Compute. Um, and Critically, it supports both v4 and IPv6. Uh, we really felt this was a strong and important need. As a smaller provider, we don't have a huge bank of IPv4 addresses to just burn through. Um, and we think that, obviously, IPv6 is the future. So we wanted to, to be there and ready today. Akanda is built on Linux, Python, and OpenStack. Um, it uses IP tables under the hood. We actually spin up service virtual machines and wire them all together. and. Uh, uh, configure the IP tables automatically through uh, APIs. And we're developing additional uh, services on top, including load balancing, firewall. And we're also making the backend pluggable to allow for alternate L2 backends. So if you don't want to use VMware, you could use something else. You could use a physical, pure physical. Um, you could use a different overlay. We're talking about open daylight and several other things as well. So here's the general architecture of Akanda. Uh, essentially, Akanda provides these virtualized services, these virtual network services, uh, routing, load balancing, firewall, and, and many others. The sky's really the limit because it's just software. We're just talking about Linux here, these appliances. The real sophisticated part is this rug orchestration system that we built, uh, which monitors the health of these different appliances that are running inside the OpenStack uh, cloud and wires them up properly to the underlying L2 backends and via the OpenStack APIs. Uh, and monitors their health and ensures that they're working properly. Um, and then we have, uh, as I mentioned, uh, other pluggable backends, uh, NSX and several others we're working on, all the way down to the physical network, which in our case we're using Cumulus networks with white box switches. Uh, and the rug, the way it operates is it actually integrates directly into OpenStack, monitoring messages that come out of all the different subsystems compute and networking specifically. And then it reacts to those uh, actions, such as floating IP association, network creation, network destruction, virtual machine boots, router creates, so on and so forth. And it actually uh, then orchestrates the creation and configuration of these service VMs. Um, and I'm actually going to get into a lot more depth about Akanda uh, tomorrow. Uh, in Amphitheater Blue at 2 o'clock, we have a full session where we're going to go uh, do a deep dive into the technology and see if anyone wants to get involved with us to, to make it a really great platform for uh, open source network virtualization. So if you're interested, you can go check out the website at aconda.io. Um, we have some information about, there about you know, how you can sign up for the newsletter, uh, find out a little bit about um, the technology itself, a link to the GitHub where we have all the source code. Uh, and yeah, we'd love to talk to you about it. And I want to give you back as much of the time as possible, so I'm going to be short today and, and have that be it. So thank you so much. If anybody has any questions, you can feel free to shoot them my way as well. Happy to answer questions. All right. See you all at 2 o'clock tomorrow at Amphitheater Blue. Thanks. <laughs>